And the TSA program in place to spot the bad guys may not be working so well. In question is a $900 million program run by behavior detection officers, also known as BDOs. Now, these BDOs are typically stationed at major transit hubs in the busiest airports across the country. But according to a new report from the Government Accountability Office, a program the BDOs use known as SPOT, or the screening of passengers by observation techniques, may not be very effective. SPOT is used to identify persons who may pose a risk to aviation security through the observation of travelers. The report re reads, quote, available evidence does not support whether behavioral indicators can be used to identify persons who may pose a risk to aviation security. Now, in 2011, the Department of Homeland Security did its own analysis on the program and found that BDOs were highly effective and, in fact, vital to identifying high-risk passengers. However, this recent GAO study rejects those findings, saying they were based on bad science. In the report, the GAO urges Congress to cut funding for the program. But at a hearing yesterday with the House Subcommittee on Transportation Security, TSA Administrator John Pistol said behavior detection officers are essential. My concern with that, those efficiencies is that if we remove one whole layer of, of uh, security, that being the BDOs, who again are the least invasive uh, and looking for intent rather than items, then that gives us uh, an exposure to potential terrorists that we don't currently have. So to talk about this latest study and whether it's enough to boot this program for good, I was joined earlier by J.D. Tuchili, managing editor of Reason 24-7. I first asked him about the kinds of behavioral indicators that TSA would consider suspicious. Well, they're looking what they say for what they say is deceptive activity. Um, what that ex exactly constitutes is anybody's guess. I mean, they do have a checklist of things they want to go through that are supposed to identify high risk passengers. Uh, the key indicator, though, is that uh, the important fact is that there doesn't seem to be any basis for the program they've established. Right. Well, I do want to take a look at some numbers out of this report. Uh, the TSA looked at the number of people selected by spot officers for further screening at 49 airports in 2011 and 2012. It found that of the 61,000 travelers they stopped, only 13 percent were referred to law enforcement officers, and only 4 percent of those people were actually arrested. That's only 0.6 percent of all the people spot stopped for extra screening. Screening. You know, in many cases, the TSA has touted the program by showing that number uh, of targets, that a certain number of targets turn into arrests. But are any of those arrests even terrorism related, or are these people ultimately arrested for some other kind of criminal activity? Well, these are generally minor crimes. And what it really comes down to is that these arrests, these supposed identifications, could have been done by chance, too. Um, when, when they looked at what the TSA was doing, when they looked at the techniques they're following, the uh, Government Accountability Office found that the techniques that the TSA have adopted um, are basically the equivalent of just going and guessing um, at whether you think somebody is high risk or not. There might be a slight improvement in the overall results, but basically, after looking at 400 uh, uh, studies of, of the techniques the TSA has adopted, they found that there really is no evidence that it improves just standing there and guessing who might be a risk. And JD, how concerned should Americans be about this program uh, allowing people to fall victim to things like racial profiling? Well, very much so. I mean, I know in the Boston uh, office, a lot of TSA workers testified that uh, being unsure what else to do, a lot of their coworkers, and there's 3,000 TSA officers around the country who are dedicated to using these techniques. Um, but in, in Boston in particular, a lot of the, uh, the TSA agents just adopted race as an indicator, and they would look at people who they thought might be suspicious based on, sp on skin color, and that's why they pulled them aside. And despite the numbers uh, that question this program's effectiveness, the TSA does say it will continue to fight to keep BDOs at their posts, saying their practices are less invasive than other techniques that the TSA uses. Do you think that justifies keeping the program in place? Well, no. I mean, uh, it's less invasive unless you're one of the people pulled aside for no good reason or for pure chance. And there's also a cost involved. 3,000 BDOs, 3,000 these behavioral detection officers around the country cost money. That's $200 million per year, 
$900 million since 2007. That's not counting the cost of the pilot program. There's no evidence that the techniques they're using work. So this is great cost to taxpayers overall. And if you're one of the, uh, the passengers who's pulled aside and harassed and hassled because somebody's spidey sense tingled, and there's no evidence that, that spidey sense is worth anything, then it, it is a great cost to you in terms of time, in terms of lost flights, in terms of harassment. Spidey sense, that's a good one. And lastly, I do want to take a look at something that may actually pose a problem for the TSA. Uh, in just under eight minutes, this, this man in a video we're going to show uh, has been able to make a grenade out of things that you can buy in an airport terminal post screening. Uh, in light of things like this, along with what we saw happen recently in California with uh, the man who opened fire on flight passengers before getting through security, do you think Homeland Security uh, should perhaps be using their resources a bit differently? Well, yes. These fixed security positions essentially are worthless. Um, Bruce Schneier, who is a security expert, has called them security theater because they're very visible, but they don't do anything. And the incident to which you're referring to is another security expert um, where he runs um, you know, websites uh, where he actually is dedicated to creating improvised weapons on the other side of security. He's created quite a few. This time he created a grenade. He's also created a shotgun. Uh, he's created uh, uh, crossbows, blowguns, uh, incendiary devices, all with things you can buy once you've, once you've passed through TSA sc uh, screening at the airport. Um, really, the two things that have happened since 9-11 that have made a difference are armoring cockpit doors and making passengers aware they can't just sit there passively if somebody tries to seize control of a flight or acts up. Um, those are the two things. You have to respond dynamically. Fixed security points of the sort that the TSA operates might harass people. But as uh, the security expert with his, uh, with his grenade created um, on the other side of the security barrier has demonstrated, they don't make us safer. Because you can bet that terrorists know exactly how to do what this one fellow has figured out how to do. Sure. Well, I do appreciate you coming and breaking all of that down for us. J.D. Tuchili, Managing Editor of Reason 24-7. Thank you.